Federal Realty Stock, ticker symbol FRT. This stock is down 4.5% year to date, underperforming the overall market. And on the 12th of February, FRT presented earnings with a miss on FFO and revenue. Most people love FRT stock because of the dividends. And I understand why with dividend yield at 4.4% and 55 consecutive years of dividend increases. And here we see the total returns in the past 5 years, including dividends. FRT returned minus 8%, while the S&P 500 is at almost 100%. A significant difference if you ask me. And with the stock coming down lately and earnings just released, it is the perfect time to do an analysis. And I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does FRT do? Federal Realty Investment Trust is a real estate investment trust and invests in shopping centers and retail properties in the United States. For the full year of 2023, FFO was reported at $6.55 per share, up versus $6.32 per share in 2022. To me, this looks pretty decent. The FFO is one of the most important numbers with REITs. FRT continued leasing with 100 signed comparable retail leases in the fourth quarter at a cash basis rollover of 12%, bringing 2023 to a total of 408 signed leases for over 2 million square feet. To me, this looks really good. The occupancy rate for the full year was at 92.2% and for the fourth quarter it was reported at 94.2%. I prefer 95% or higher, so this is something to keep your eye on. For the full year of 2024, FFO per share is expected to be in a range of 6.65 to 6.87 per share. Again, a steady increase versus 2023, where FFO was reported at $6.55. Comparable properties growth is expected to grow at 2 to 3.5% and this also is really important to me. In total, FRT has 8.4 billion in total assets and total liabilities is sitting at 5.2 billion. To me, this looks really good. And now that we know more about the company, it is time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. FRT is a 8 billion market cap company. P ratio is not a fair metric to use with REITs, so I'll be using the price to FFO instead. Right now it is sitting at 15 indicating they might be fairly valued. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for FRT, so make sure to watch until the end, because price to FFO is only telling a small part of the full story here. Revenue is at 1.13 billion, and in this graph we see that revenue went up in the long run. To me this looks really good. There was a decline during lockdown periods, which doesn't concern me a lot. We see that margins are going up in the long run, however in the past couple of years it is really going up and down, and most recently it doesn't look any good. EPS is going up in the long run, but it is similar to the margins, going up and down a lot recently, definitely keep an eye on this number as well. Analysis expect that in the coming years the EPS will increase to $3.95 per share. The year-over-year -year growth numbers seems to be incorrect. For the revenue it is looking pretty interesting with small growth expectations to 1.37 billion in 2027. Again, growth numbers year-over-year -year seem to be incorrect. Return on assets is sitting at almost 3% which is a low number. Return on equity is looking pretty decent and the most important number return on invested capital is sitting at 3.6% which is a low number, but it is slightly higher versus the 5 year average, so that's the silver lining here. 
Current ratio is at 2.6, which is a little on the high side, but I'm not worried that much right now. Another interesting thing is the debt. FRT has 4.7 billion in debt. I prefer companies that can pay on at least a big chunk of their total debt with the total cash. FRT has 255 million in total cash, so they can't pay down a big chunk of their total debt. This is something that I don't like. So it is very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up and down a lot. To me this doesn't look any good, especially since the rest of the business is performing quite steady. Shares outstanding are increasing which is very common for a REIT, since they increase shares to raise capital. When shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we are talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 4.4%, which is a great number. Annual payout is at $4.36 and payout ratio is at 64%, which is below the 75% average for REITs. The growth numbers are looking really impressive with a 5 year growth rate of 1.4%, which is not that great of course, but take a look at the dividend growth in years, 55 consecutive years of dividend increases. In here we see the dividends paid since 2012. They increased the dividends at a low pace, but in the long run this really adds up. The interesting thing is that also in the past couple of years there was almost no growth in dividends. In this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024, 2025 and 2026. Of course this is an estimation that can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It is expected to increase slowly from here. Overall these dividends look really interesting to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare FRT stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added N and ADC. On the 5 year chart we see that FRT massively underperformed the S&P 500. In total FRT stock returned minus 8% while the S&P 500 returned 97%. And keep in mind this is including dividends. Both ADC and N didn't do any better job either. On the 1 year chart it looks pretty interesting with the S&P 500 beating FRT again. But this time only FRT had somewhat of a decent return with almost 10%, while both N and ADC are looking way worse. On the 6 month chart it is again the S&P 500 that is the winner here, but this time N was really close of matching the S&P 500. On the 1 month chart it is looking pretty similar for most stocks, and it has to be said that the S&P 500 had again the highest return. So bottom line, FRT underperformed the S&P 500 long term and short term. So could this be the perfect time to buy FRT stock? Well, let's check the 3 price target that I created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the 3 price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 2, 4 and 6% based on historical performance, their own outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin I'm filling in 18, 20 and 22 percent. And for the free cash flow margin I'm putting in 20, 22 and 24 percent. For the PE ratio I'm putting in 20 and for the price of free cash flow I'm putting in 18, 19 and 20. My desired annual return is 12.5 percent since I can get an easy 10 percent average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now FRT stock is around $100, I hit analyze and we only see red numbers. And since this is a read I'm only focusing on the discounted cash flow value. We have a low price target of $34, we have a mid price target of $45 and we have a high price target of $59. All price targets are indicating this stock is massively overvalued. And to be honest I think the mid to high price target is the most justified here. 
Which price target do you think is the most justified here? Let me know in the comments down below. My final conclusion on FRT is that it is not looking any good in terms of valuation. The stock seems heavily overvalued and that's also because of the lack in growth. From a different point of view things look really good, but again growth is slowing down big time. To me it shows this company is kinda dead and not moving anywhere. The total returns of minus 8% in the past 5 years says it all. And keep in mind this is including dividends. For now I'm skipping on this stock and I will keep analyzing them from time to time. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and it did bring some insights of the company to you. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.